Hey folks, welcome back to Let's Play LSD. I'm your host, CPC Gamer, and it's episode 50. 50 five, zero. That is as many as five tens. And that's terrible. Or it's pretty good. I don't know. I mean, I never thought I would upload 50 episodes of anything. Forget doing it at the same game. And to celebrate this, the game has put me right back where I finished yesterday. But this is fitting, because I haven't moved from my recording spot either. I just fired up my capture software and I went for another run. Gotta say, I'm liking that sky, though. Like all the blues and the purples, it reminds me of Final Fantasy VI. And much like Silent Hill 2, anything that reminds me of it is a good thing. I mean, generally speaking, anyways. It's entirely possible to make me go, Wow, Silent Hill 2 did that way better. Which a lot of indie games do. And has this rock formation always been here? I don't remember it being so close to the giant trees. Maybe it has always been there. I'll be honest, my knowledge of LSD has been entirely supplanted with thoughts of Final Fantasy VI at this point. I think I'm near the edge of the map, though, so... Let's go find it and jump off. It's a shame that I've actually done stuff in this dream. You know, wandered around looking at stuff. I tend to find that you get better results if you start the dream and just barrel straight ahead until you fall off the map. Like, ideally, within a few seconds. See what this does to me, how about now? Not a great deal, but... Hey, new square. That's... Not something I'm going to complain about. Also, you can see how some of the squares have uncovered themselves again. I mentioned this right at the start. As you go through the game, Covered squares will fade from white to black, and then they just vanish. I mean, you can recover them, though, which is nice. If that sort of thing interests you. And this does not interest me. I, I don't know what that says. So, Magic Crayon, it's over to you. You know, I'm always wary of how I talk when I begin a new day, because... I'm convinced that I'll end up talking right through a text stream, which makes it very hard to edit for myself when I get to post-production. I mean, I put way too much effort into this, for what it is, you know? Ah, we have music. So, this is not a text stream. Which sucks, because... Now I need to roll something and think of some words. Oh, I know! So... Okay, I picked up a Wii U recently. I mean, I didn't want to. Like, I was going to wait until Smash Brothers came out. But then Nintendo said, Are you sure? Because this one comes with Mario Kart 8 as a pack-in. It's like baby's first F-Zero. Okay, you, you don't blink if I do that, so... Let's go somewhere else. So yeah, anyway, I got a Wii U. I was babysitting a couple of days back, and the kids wanted to play with it because... Like, they're six, and it's a shiny new video games. The thing is, one of the kids was, like, five, and he wasn't entirely sure what was going on. And I'm pretty sure it spawned me in the air before dropping me. Hmm. Anyways, we're playing battle mode on Mario Kart, and this kid's just tinkering around in circles because he's not sure how to control the car, and the AI must have figured, like... What's going on with this pillock? You know, mostly harmless, let's leave him be. So he's winning. Me, my dad, and his older sister, we are all on the same team, and we are all losing to this four or five-year-old kid who's just skipping in circles on the water, having the time of his life. <laughs> and speaking of underwater, I know I've brought this up before, but that murky sky looks like we're under a pond or something. I wonder how the game works. Like, does the fog pull from a bank of however many colours, or does it roll it at random? I mean, it seems like it'd be easy enough just to set the fog to whatever hex value. I mean, I'm pretty sure the PlayStation could use hex values for colours, because... 
Like, Symphony of the Night has that color change cape. Joseph's Cloak, I want to say that it's called. And where on earth is the river? You know, I'm sure I did this last time. I tried to find the river and just blundered into the Kitsune Shrine and beyond. Oh, but look! A handmaiden has brought me a drink. Just like in the real life. And just like in real life, attempting to interact with said young lady just gets me sent somewhere else immediately. I don't know, I was going for a self-deprecating relationship joke there, but it petered out. Appropriately. To the organic maze! And I think that's a much nicer word than flesh tunnels, don't you? Oh, and the walls look pretty nice if you ask me. Look a little bit like magic eye. It's one of those weird, sort of exclusively 90s things. Magic eye posters. Hey, little guy. Do you remember magic eye posters? Because they're back in pog form. But not really, though. So, I'm going to wander this way and make my way back to the ring. Or link on a wall. You want to be careful in here, Andy. People might comment on your lack of prowess in the womb. I'm kidding, nobody's watching this. Actually, no, I can't make that joke anymore. YouTube introduced the recent views panel, and it's been tracking about 24,000 a month, which is mind-blowing to me. I can't even think of a decent analogy for that beyond a room with 24,000 people in it, you know? And where on earth am I going? Like, I was trying to find the dumpster with the body parts in it, but it's not spawned, so... You know, I'm just passing the time while I do this. I wonder why I haven't seen the UFO in a while. Or at all. Really, I mean, I got a good look at it in one video. And it's the kind of thing where, if I hadn't seen it myself, I would probably never believe that it was there. Do you do anything? I know I've shown off the streetlights in the central area, but I... I don't know if these guys do anything. I'm gonna say no, they don't. So... Whatever, let's push on. Alright, last sweep. No UFO? There's a lot of forlorn-looking... towers, and I just realized this! All of those lights are on! Now, there's a bunch of people in every one of those towers, and they're just... up there, watching me wandering around. That can make you really paranoid if you think about it. I mean, you're already on edge being out here in the cold and dark and... I mean, I presume it to be cold, because it's a little poor town and... whatever. And here you've got towers full of unseen faces silently watching you. I'd lose my mind! With that said, I'm naturally worried about pretty much everything, pretty much all the time, so... What's another reason for me to panic, right? Although, the only times when I panic in my dreams, actually physically panic, is when I get a phone call and that spooky voice on the other end wakes me up. I'm kind of hoping that the spooky thing would be in one of these. I mean, this is going to be a recurring thing with this little one of videos. I'm going to keep exploring these sheds when I come to them. I have heard there's sometimes a ghost in here, too. Or, I mean, he spawns in the first one as well as this one. I forget which one he usually spawns in for me. I wonder if, like, the shed he spawns in determines what he does. I don't know. And now I'm here. So, doesn't really matter. So I'll send that silly non-sequitur and pick something else to talk about. And in order to do that, I choose to return to the flush tunnels. Because apparently repetition is what I need to help me think of things to talk about. I don't know, it's weird because like sometimes ideas and such they just roll off my tongue and into the microphone, and sometimes I just 
Nothing happens, and I have to gently sit and describe the game to you guys. I suppose it's the same as feeling funny or not. Like, it, it, it comes and goes in waves. Like, what we really need to do is have something explode or something. I mean, that's something they advise doing in story writing and the like. If you want to practice your writing or character development, completely change the genre. You know, like, have aliens invade or one character confess their love for another, blow something up, you know? Oh, hey! You know, I've had a thought about this little layout. So, generally, this place is called the Sex Garden. Or, I mean, at least it is on the wiki. Anyways, take a look at the layout of the walls. Because it looks to me like a very basic outline of the female reproductive tract. To me. And it says sex on the inside. So maybe this relates to something. Or maybe not. I mean, it certainly doesn't help that one of the Grey Man's more frequent spawn spots is right there in the garden. I mean, certainly nothing bizarre right there, so... Let's move on. It's the Violence District, I think, based on the music. Oh, and it is. Okay, let's take a bet. When I move, am I gonna fall or drop to the floor? There is a difference between the two. Oh, and down I go, apparently. No lucid dream flying for me. I have never been able to have lucid dreaming happen. But usually, when I realize I'm dreaming, I just wake myself up. It's such a defeatist English attitude, I think. And that's one of the reasons that our TV shows very rarely take off outside the UK, because we love losers. Like, if you look at some of the best comedies that are considered to be British greats, you've got, like, Black Adder, Red Dwarf, Faulty Towers, whatever. None of them have heroes. I mean, most of them don't even have good characters. They are all horrible jerks in one way or another. Like, they're not the, the blonde-haired, blue-eyed, square-jawed hero that America likes. England and America being the only two countries in the world to produce TV, apparently. And this guy looks like a teacher. I don't know why. I think it's the fact that his hair looks like a hat to me. And is he crying? It's that or makeup. Which makes me think that he is actually a she. I mean, I don't know. It, it looks like Discoon in drag. So, make of that what you will. And I meant to do that. Like, I'm experimenting with sideways linking and going to do what I actually wanted to do, so... Yeah. Take that, I... Guess? Oh, hi! How's it going? Man, could you hear the rest of the trumpet sound clip? No, you couldn't. And that car didn't look right. I'm not sure, like, because I've only seen it on TV and games and stuff, but I'm pretty sure that cars continue straight down when they hit the water. They don't change trajectory like that. Again, though, I've only seen it in fictional representations. Like, the actual physics of things could change in reality. Oh, and it's that weird music again. I love this. It's equal parts nice and weird when the game throws a choir voice at you like that. Although I will say, it's really weird to get such a weird and evil-sounding theme with such a bright and cheerful Kyoto. And again, I'm standing still so I can rip the music out of this video a bit later on. I think that's enough to make a decent loop out of it. I, I don't know how well you can hear it, but it also sounds like there's really low running water in the background. Or like the microphone is underwater or something. Again, I have to go back to the Drowned Woman from Fatal Frame 2, because that was her theme tune too, just a low, underwater, gurgling noise. And I think it's weird how I keep bringing up these things with the slightest provocation, but I wouldn't list them as my favourite characters or monsters or whatever. Although off the top of my head, I don't know what would be my favourite monsters. I mean, this is one thing in The Suffering 2 
It's like a giant spider the size of a house, except it's made entirely out of guns. I mean, that's pretty metal. And I suppose an obvious one would be the floating head from Fatal Frame. Because that thing still, still, even now, shows up in my nightmares. Otherwise, I don't know. I mean, that damn head is enough horror to more than satiate me, you know? I mean, I suppose I could say that man is the greatest monster, but that would probably be me turning into a giant bug movie from the 50s. I, mean, I, I can't scream them loud or long enough to do that. And I'm also pretty sure that Crowley LP'd that one, so... Whatever. I'm gonna head along to the face, see if I can link with it and go somewhere else in Kyoto. It happened the last few times, and... Yeah. Figured I'd give it a go and see what happens the next 13 or 14 more times. I wonder why I always go to 13 or 14 when I need a generic number. It's like when I need a random name, I just pick Adjective Dan or whatever Greg. And it makes it really awkward because I have a friend named Dan and I stayed with him recently so I found myself describing him in bizarre ways when I wasn't actually talking to or about him. It was awkward, and something needlessly complicated by my own need to refer to hypothetical individuals. Is anyone in this boat? I guess so. In my own game, I have sometimes seen that thing spawn with just... Uh, was it? No boatman? I think boatman is the, the safest word, given that it is literally that, a man in a boat. Well, never mind that then. Let's go and do something else. I'm gonna take a look at the boatman that I was just talking about. <laughs> he doesn't have any collision data, so you can't link with him, but it's fun to take a look at... I don't know, whatever it was I wanted to call him a while ago in a desperate bid for t-shirt sales or memetic humor. Like techno Buddha or gay pride Buddha or something like that. I don't understand how this works, you guys. I do understand rainbows, though. And that's generally how you can tell when I've been doing the merchandising at work. Because there's just rainbows everywhere. Or, you know, the spectrum. But I wager if you show the colour scheme to some random down on the street, they would call it the rainbow rather than the spectrum. Wait a sec, what's going on with the music? Oh, that is awesome! <laughs> and again, it sounds like underwater gurgling. I think this is another thing I'm going to have to rip out of the video and upload it. That was a wonderfully creamy sentence, CPC Gamer. You should be proud of that. I don't see sentry fish. Clearly. I mean, it's the size of a blimp, so you'd notice it. In any case, I'm going to jump down the fountain. Hopefully, that will tweak the RNG a little and have some screwy effects the next time I play. Is that any square? I can't tell. Whatever. Join us next time for some more LSD, and until next time, goodbye!